Hi, I thought I'd make a video about um, helping your dog learn to swim. So I have golden retrievers, so they are gun dogs and they're bred to retrieve um, birds from water. So obviously they're really good swimmers and they've also got long legs and they've got a double coat, which helps them dry off quickly. But even if your dog has short legs, you can still teach your dog to swim. Swimming is a really enjoyable, fun activity, and there are a number of reasons why you should teach your dog uh, while they're a puppy. Try and get them swimming as soon as possible. Swimming is a really good exercise for your dog. It's, it's a break from having a walk or run. Um, a five minute swim, some people think it's the equivalent of uh, three miles walking. Um, also, your dog might have health problems later on in life. Your dog might um, be overweight, might have uh, hip problems, circulation problems, joint problems, arthritis, a number of health problems that develop later on and your dog might not be able to uh, walk very far, but they'll still be able to swim. And then swimming will be really good exercise for them. It'll help them keep their um, muscle strength and help them with their circulation and their general health because they will still need exercise even though they have um, some health problems. Um, swimming might not come naturally um, to your dog. That's why you actually need to make an effort to teach your dog to swim in the first year. Um, at the moment, it, it's the sea is really cold. It's like eight degrees, so I wouldn't bother. Well, this is like November um, in England, but I would wait until the spring. The sea really needs to be above 12 degrees um, if your dog's going to swim. Um, also the same with rivers and lakes. Just wait until the water's a little bit warmer. You can teach your dog to enjoy, you know, just maybe jumping into the river to get a ball if it's safe, if you haven't had lots of rain. But don't bother teaching serious swimming until the weather's a bit warmer. The sea, the water temperatures are warm. So lots of people have asked me, um, how come my dogs are so good at swimming? And so I thought I'd make this video showing you that um, my dogs swim because we swim. It's that simple. So I'll show you um, us taking the dogs for a swim. It's like eight o'clock in August evening. So the light's a bit weird, but I'll show you. It's lovely. Beach is practically empty as well. So here it goes. I'm just about to run in. The problem with this beach is that at low tide it goes a long way out and it gets a bit boring. At high tide the water will be where I'm standing and because it's quite steep the beach it's like two steps in the into deep water so it's um, a good place for a swim in my opinion. I like deep water so here I go with the swim. So as soon as my son goes into the water dogs will follow him in. Even though Mia's holding the ball, sometimes you have to take a tennis ball in with you before she'll come out. And when they're puppies, they don't like the waves. I mean, today it's fine. It's just like a lake, really, isn't it? But, yeah, I mean, it's really shallow. Look at puppy swim. So when your dog's first a puppy, then don't take her in big waves. Just shallow waves and stay with your puppy all the time. When she gets a bit bigger, just lift her up and carry her to like knee deep and gradually go deeper and deeper till you're in. I've had a swimming hat on, that's why my hair's still dry because I hate washing my hair. So, but we're still here, we're at the beach. Um, sunset already, it's a lovely time of day. Right, and that's how you exercise your dogs without having to even get up. We don't use ball throwers because they're going to be bad for the joints. We just throw balls by hand. Um, we don't throw stones because... So to start with, when you're trying to teach your dog to swim, you could throw a ball around. So just stand on the beach, throw a ball here and there, see if your dog chases the ball and they get in the in the process um, you could also meet a friend and uh, whose dog is confident in the water and that dog will probably teach your dog how to swim and then that's problem sorted really just one swim session and it's done or the other the third thing which I often do for people is to take their dogs into the water because I swim in the sea sometimes uh, people are trying to get their dogs in the sea and I'll say oh I'll just lift your dog up so I lift the dog carry it in um, not too far, 
but she's far enough so and the dog trusts me and um, it swims back to the beach um, because some people don't swim in the sea make sure there are no waves when you're teaching your dog and that um, there's a gently sloping beach not a steep beach so you know the dog can easily get out of the um, out of the water um, big waves can scare a dog until they're really confident swimmer if you're swimming in a cooler time of year you could take your dog's blanket with you so my dogs have uh, microfiber blankets I put them on uh, when they're wet or when I've like washed the mud and uh, fox pool with them so I just put their blankets on for an hour so you don't leave the blanket on for too long because it's wet um, but the, the microfiber is really good at getting most of the moisture out of their coat so um, don't let your dog swim in a swimming pool don't teach your dog in a pool it's a lot easier to teach your dog if you're near the beach somewhere gently sloping so they can trust that they can easily get out once your dog's a confident swimmer then of course you can swim in a pool uh, make sure you teach your dog where, exactly where the steps are so they know how to get out so there are some things to look out for when you're swimming one of these is ear infections um, Many dogs get ear infections from swimming, so you might need to wipe your dog's um, ears afterwards. I use Otodyne as an ear cleaner. I use that anytime I see my dog scratching an ear. Um, I'll just check the ears. If it's at all smelly or black stuff in it, I'll just give a squirt of Otodyne and then wipe it out with a kitchen towel. So don't use toilet paper or cotton wool because it can go into the ear and get lost. Kitchen towel is quite um, a lot stronger. Um, if you swim in swimming pools, the chlorine can irritate your dog's nose and eyes. So, um, yeah, you need to be careful of that. And then a third problem is swallowing water. Dogs often do this, especially Mia, one of my dogs. She likes to catch two tennis balls in her mouth. So that means her mouth is open while she's swimming. She can't close her mouth with two tennis balls in it. So then she's going to uh, take in a lot of sea water and then vomit afterwards so you need to keep an eye out on your dog to make sure that they haven't um, you know if they have swallowed that sea water they need to vomit it up afterwards When you go to the beach in summer um, and your dog's had a swim remember they also need shade and they need drinking water because um, they can dogs can get sunburned especially if they've got pink noses or any like skin which is exposed so don't forget um, their water and their shade as well another problem with the sea is pollution uh, we've had problems in um, England recently with sewage being discharged into the sea for some ridiculous reasons but um, you need to be really careful because your dog will drink that um, sewage and um... also there was some waxy stuff some weird waxy stuff that got washed up onto the beach um, jellyfish is another problem um, and any kind of pollution in the sea also dead sea animals sometimes they eat like fish like dogfish that have been washed up on the beach also fishing hooks are awful because they might still have the bait on and then your dog i have actually met somebody once whose dog died from eating a fishing hook um, and they had emergency surgery but the hook had punctured the gut so they couldn't save the dog's life once your dog is a confident swimmer, um, you can try other water sports. So I know people who do stand up paddle boarding with their dogs, they do kayaking, canoeing, even surfing. Right? Your dog is really 
good company when you're doing all these different um, activities. You might want to get a flotation device if you're going to be a long way from shore. Get a flotation device and one that's got a handle on the back so you can just lift your dog up out of the water. So if your dog gets um, falls off your stand-up paddleboard, you can easily just sit down and then lift the dog up because your dog might capsize the whole thing by climbing up. Also, if you've got your dog on boats, you should have a flotation device on your dog just in case they fall overboard. So here's a video of my son taking our dogs for a swim. And you can see as soon as he goes in, the dogs will just follow him straight away and they just have great fun in the sea. So here's someone I met on the beach who's teaching her dog how to swim. So um, you can see the dog is just having a great time. She's got the dog on a lead because she, she doesn't quite trust that he's going to stay with her. But she's running along the beach, having great fun with the dog. And the dog's learning to love the sea. She lives right next to the beach, so she's determined this dog's going to swim with her. Okay, don't let your dog swim in the sea if it's rough, stormy weather. Because they might get frightened by the waves. Um, it is quite a scary experience, even for a human, to get like washed out um, and get pulled under a wave and dumped. It's very scary for a dog because they, they're not strong enough. Their legs aren't long enough. It's quite difficult for them. You know, if they panic when if they can't reach the bottom of the sea. Thanks for watching, everyone. Um, my next video is going to be about um, packing my camper van, ready to go to Spain. And then after that, it will be different travel routes to Spain. And then we'll be on our adventures in Spain. So you can follow along, see where I'll get up to, see if it's something you want to do in future. Travel with your dogs or travel in a camper van. So... Thanks for watching. Bye.